Hi guys, it's Sterling Inspector here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to overclock your GPU directly in the T-Rex Miner program. So many people tend to use external overclocks such as MSI Afterburner. This is fine to use external overclocks. However, when you overclock directly in your mining program, it can reduce the power output of your cards and increase stability of both hash rate and power. With this decrease in power, we can then improve our profitability of our rigs. So I think that T-Rex Miner is one of the only miners that allows for internal overclocking, but I think that all miners should start to put this in as it's very helpful and it means that you don't have to set up your overclocks every time you restart your rigs. So let's get into how to overclock. So the first thing you want to do is open up your T-Rex batch file or miner file. To do this, you've got to find it in your T-Rex file and then right click and hit edit on the file. This will bring up the command line for the miner. This line of text basically tells your computer to start mining on a certain coin on a certain server. So because this command line controls your computer, we can also input overclocks into this line of text and it will apply these overclocks to your GPU. So to do this, we need to input all the lines of text that correspond to each overclock setting. If we pull up MSI Afterburner, we can see that we have four main overclocks and these are power limit, core clock, memory clock and fan speed. There are other overclocks which we can go over later, but these are the main four. So to put these in the command line, we need to open back up our minor file or batch file. Then we need to enter each different overclock. I'm going to start first with power limit. Now the first thing you want to do is put a space and then two dashing lines. These dashing lines basically tell the computer to execute a command. So once we have the two lines, we put a PL for power limit, which is the first overclock. We do the same for all of the other overclocks. Next two dashes and then a CC clock and then two dashes and then M clock and then two dashes for fan speed. So after that, your command line should look like this. Now, this is the basic setup for overclocking. Now, to apply these overclocks, you need to input your numbers. But before we do this, we need to find out the order of our cards on the rig. This is because we can apply different overclocks to different cards. The easiest way to find out the order of the cards is to start your miner. This will load the cards in order as seen here. Now keep this order in mind. If we go to the miner file, we can start to overclock. So if we want all our cards to have the same power limit, we can simply just put one number and it will apply it to all cards on the rig. For example, if we put 80, it will apply 80% to all cards on the rig. However, if you want different power limits for different cards, we need to put different power limits in the order of the cards. This is where the order of the cards comes in handy. For example, if you want the first card in the rig to have a power limit of 90 and the other two to have 85, we would put 90, 85, 85. This is basically corresponding to the order that your cards are on the rig. So number one on the rig would be the first one, number two is the second, number three is the third, and so on. This then separates the card and applies different power limits to different cards. The same applies to the other three overclocks. So power limit and fan speed are both a percentage of 100, and the core clock and memory clock are plus and minus from the standard clocks. So you don't actually have to input the core clock number of, let's say, 1500, it would only be plus 200. Or, or whatever overclock you choose. So I'm just going to fill this out to show you what it should look like. The last thing we need to do before we test if it has worked is to enable the T-Rex miner to run as an admin. This can be done very easily. All you need to do is find the actual T-Rex miner executable, which should be in your T-Rex folder. It looks like this. Once found, you want to right click and click on properties. Next, you want to click on the compatibility tab and then find a box that says change settings for all users. Click that and then we want to lastly click on the box that says run this program as an administrator. So once that has been done and the miner file has been filled out, the best way to test it is to just start up your miner. You'll know if it has worked because the miner will show that it's loaded the overclocks onto the GPUs. As you could see here, it's loaded them, the power limits, the fan speeds, the memory clocks and the core clocks. So normally if they haven't loaded, it means your command line is wrong and T-Rex Miner will tell you if it's wrong. I would double check if you have two dashes, then firstly make sure there are spaces in between both the overclocks and the numbers. 
If it still doesn't run, I can help you guys out on my Discord. Just send me which overclocks you're trying to do and I'll write out a new command line that should work for you. The link to join the Discord is in the description. Now we have gone over the main overclocks, there are also other ones we can add to this command line for certain cards. So the next three we can add is the lock core clock, which basically locks your core clock to a certain number. This tends to be for newer cards and not the old ones. This is put as two dashes, then lock, and then dash, and then C clock, like this. The next one is the memory tweak, which is the same as the ETH enlargement pill that's only for Pascal cards. To write this, we just put two dashes, then MT. Now the memory tweak ranges from one to six, one being the lowest and six being the highest. So you'll have to play around with the figures and figure out which one is the best for your cards. Last thing we can add is the intensity of the card. This applies to all cards and basically pushes your card to produce more hash rate the higher the intensity. This is written as two dashes and then intensity followed by the intensity you want to set as a number. 22 is the standard one, but you can increase this up to 26. So if you don't want to apply any overclocks to the cards in the order, you can just put zero. So say your power limit wants to be 90 for one card and then 100 for another and then 85, you would just put 90, zero, 85 because zero would be a hundred percent so those are the seven main overclocks that you can input into t-rex minor there are other niche ones that you can put in but you can find them on the t-rex minor github i hope to see in the future that all miners implement these kind of custom settings that you can add to the batch file this really does help when you're setting up your rigs after turning them off because it will load all the overclocks back onto the card straight away without you having to remember them one of the biggest advantages of this is because everything is done in T-Rex Miner. It means that if T-Rex Miner decides to restart, then it will continue to run without having to open up the miner again. For example, if T-Rex restarts normally, it would just shut down. This means you'd have to manually turn it back on. But when you input the overclocks and run as admin, it will restart and turn the program on back instantly. Lastly, if you guys don't want to write out all these lines of text, then I have left an empty line of text in the description, which included all seven overclocks I've mentioned in this video. So you guys can copy and paste that into your minor file and then add your overclock numbers in. So I hope you guys learn how to overclock properly in T-Rex Minor. If you're struggling, please leave a comment below and put your questions in the Discord. Leave a like and subscribe for more crypto mining content.